Mm, man, 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 what's up, y'all, what's up, y'all, what's up, y'all, question, question of the day, question of the day, um, let me get some water in me, so brother, mouth don't get dry, this isn't gonna be too long, uh, this is my opinion, this is my take on, um, the question I asked, what makes a fully mature dog, um, male and female, uh, when we ask that question, when we ask that question, it comes down to a few things. It comes down to uh, physical, how the dog is, how the dog matures, how the dog uh, develops. It comes down to mental status. Is the dog mentally mature or is the dog still very adolescent in its mental state? Uh, with the mental state, that goes with, you know, the the ability to train the dog, the the way the dog responds uh, responds to you with verbal commands, as well as some of the antics that they might to, uh, do or the ways they might test you. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes down to the age thing, I really, personally, I don't go off of age when it comes down to what makes a fully mature dog. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, it's three years, it's four years. Um, some people say it's two years. But in all honesty, the way I look at what a fully mature dog is, it has to be, is for a female, it has to be, is this female fully uh, developed? Has this bitch, um, you know, grown properly? Is her weight right? Is her size right? Uh, is she still going to go through a bunch of growth spurts? Um, and then it goes to, um, you know, Okay, the bitch is grown. The bitch isn't going through any gro more growth spurts. Uh, how many actual um, heat cycles has she gone through? You know, I think, uh, in my opinion, for a female, if a female dog isn't mature until the dog has at least four heat cycles. When it comes down to the heat cycles for a female, the body changes every time it, it goes through a heat cycle, especially starting at a young age. A lot of times we get those dogs that go through a heat cycle, their first one, about six, seven months old. Is that a mature bitch because she went through a heat cycle at six, seven months old? Absolutely not. The dog is still mentally off. The dog is still physically off, most likely, unless it's a very small breed. Um, and then, uh, you know, by the time the second heat cycle, you know, the body puts uh, hormones throughout the body to help with growth. You know, so that uh, that is expressed throughout the second and third heat cycle. And then by the fourth heat cycle, most likely the dog is going to be over the age of two years old or just about over the age of two years old, but the dog has went through a few cycles to where the hormones are, are starting to level out and it's starting to finish up the growth patterns of the hormone cycle for a female. Now, when it comes down to a male, a male is totally different. Well, yeah, totally different. A mature male, it has to, it's not just when the balls drop. It's not just when the dog is able to uh, bust a nut, but the dog has to men be mentally there. You can have a young dog. You can have a 10-month-old dog, uh, uh, balls dropped, uh, able to bust a nut, but it's still a puppy. You know, technically, it's still a puppy. So it's a combination of a few things. It's a combination of the age. It's a combination of uh, the mental status. It's a combination of the physical status of the dog. But it's really down to what you feel. You know, now, I do disagree with people who uh, breed their female dogs at a very young age. I do disagree with that. I do disagree with, um, you know, people who say, oh, my dog is fully mature at a year age. That is that is not a fully mature dog. That is still an adolescent dog, you know. So you have to take all of this into consideration. You have to take age into consideration, physical attributes into consideration, as well as mental status at, into consideration when you are assessing if the dog is fully mature or not. Now, before anybody say anything, yes, I'm going to tell them myself, yes, I did breed a very young dog. Ragnar was young. Ragnar uh, was just over a year uh, when he had a litter, but it was a few things that we did, and it was a few things that I did along the way to see if, okay, if I breed this male, would this male uh, still be very puppy-like and very adolescent after he has uh, bust a couple nuts, or will he start to mature out a little bit? And when I mean mature out a little bit, um, will that male start to take that male role? Will, uh, when he's bred, will that male... Uh, 
hear something on the outside of the gate, will he protect his yard? Will he take over? Will he completely take over the yard? And that's where I got to with, um, you know, should I breed Ragnar? Shouldn't I breed Ragnar? And I got to the point where I noticed that Ragnar, at a little over a year, was starting to take that role. He was starting to keep his bitches away from the gate. Anytime somebody went to the edge of the gate and was messing on the outside of the gate, that male dog would run down the fence and get in front of his bitches and literally go back and forth across the yard to push the bitches back up to the top of the hill and then he'll go down and do his thing. So I looked at that as, okay, he's maturing mentally. He's taking on that dominant role. He's taking on that male role, that protector role inside of the house. He's taking that on. So I was like, okay, from there, since he's doing that and showing me that, Physically, he's big. I know he's not done growing. He's still not done growing, you know? So I was like, I want to get my bitch bread. And we're going to talk about my bitch in a second. Um, I want to get my bitch bread, but only if he has a certain uh, 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 sperm count. So I, I, I checked his sperm out. He had a very high sperm count at his age. And I was like, shit, like, we can go ahead and make puppies off of him if we want to. So I went ahead and started putting them on my sperm up uh, formula, which helps increase the sperm, which help uh, strengthen up the sperm to make sure when I do have a litter that uh, the sperm is at its most potent, you know, when he's bred. So we gave him the sperm up for about a month, a month and a half, and then we rechecked him. Now, if his sperm was still at the same rate it was, I would say, okay, he is not... Uh, able to breed at this point because the sperm which is known to actually help increase the vitality of the sperm did not happen but because he did i said okay he is ready to go ahead and bust a nut now when it comes down to my female when it comes down to my female my female i didn't breed this bitch until she was four years old that bitch went through seven heat cycles by four years old seven heat cycles when she turned two, the bitch went through three. I said, oh, man, you know, she's mellowed out a little bit. You know, let me see how she acts the next time she's in the heat and gets around a male dog. Man, I took that bitch around a male dog. That bitch was not ready to have puppy. She, she, no, 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 no. She turned into a puppy once again. Like a full out young puppy. I said, this bitch ain't ready. Age of three. Didn't even try it. I said, I'm going to give this bitch until the age of four. And then we're going to check her out again. We're going to assess her again. Now, at the age of four, at the age of four, so much has happened. The bitch started taking on the mother role with other puppies. When we pulled Ragnar in, I noticed that that bitch was taking to him like it was her own. And following him around and trying to clean up the and trying to keep him out of trouble with the other pack members. So I said, oh man, this bitch is starting to show me some mental maturity. Because when it comes down to mental maturity for females, if you have an adolescent thinking female, when she has puppies, a few things are going to happen. One, I see it a lot, especially with some of these uh, uh, bullies that I don't know what they really come off. They're like, why the hell did my dog kill these puppies? She's not mentally there. Two, these young adolescent females go to have a litter. They drop that litter, but then they smother the puppies out. Even though these puppies are whining and she hears the whining, but she smothers these puppies out by laying on them. She's not mentally prepared. Because a mentally prepared bitch, if she lays on her puppy and hears the puppy whine, what does she do? She gets up and looks. Is everything okay? A mentally mature female, when she drops her litter, what happens? Instinct takes over. Instinct takes right on over. Instinct tells her, I need to nurse these puppies. Instinct tells her, I need to protect these puppies. That's instinct. And instinct happens as maturity happens. Those go hand in hand. All right. So we waited for Mei Shang to have these puppies. And when Mei Shang had this litter, it was a very little bit of husbandry that I actually had to do for her. That I had. <laughs> when she had these puppies, it was very little husbandry that I actually had to do. Meaning she dropped the puppy. 
instinct took over. She took that sack. She broke it open. She consumed that sack that covered her puppies. She woke them puppies up. She licked them. She chewed the umbilical cord. And then she put the puppy to the side and had another. And then the same thing over and over and over. Because she was mentally ready. But I knew she was physically ready by this. The ease of labor. The ease of labor. She got prepared. She walked into her pen. She said, I'm about ready to have these puppies. So this bitch started to lay down and not want to leave her sanctuary. That's her sanctuary. Their whelping box. That's their sanctuary. That's why when I see photos or I see videos of people that have two females with puppies in the same whelping area, I be flipping my wig. You're supposed to give that to them. That's their sanctuary. That's their private space to raise up their babies. All right. So I watched how she developed. I watched how these puppies started to develop and they confirmed my theory. She was mentally ready now to have these puppies. Not at three, not at two, not at a year, at four years old. It took her until four years old to have her very first litter. Now, because it took her until four years old to have her first litter, I know Every single time she has a litter from now on out, it's going to be easier for her. She's going to do more and I'm going to have to do less because we have to still remember these are dogs. No matter what we do, no matter how we breed these animals, no matter. Instinct is supposed to kick on. This is still a dog. This is still an animal. So it takes a little bit of age, a little bit of physical but a whole lot of mental, a whole lot of mental to say a dog is fully mature. But then we have to think about this. Somebody's going to say, well, what about those rare cases where a dog seems to never mentally become mature? The dog is four, the dog is five, but it's still very puppy like it's still very adolescent. Like, What, do you, what about then? Don't breed that dog. If you have a four or a five or a six-year-old dog that is still very adolescent, that is still very puppy, like like the pu like the dog is still a year old or less, your dog is mentally off, and that is not a dog that you actually want to breed. Because I have done that before. Back in '94, I bred a dog. The dog was six years old. Six years old, not mentally there. Not mentally there. Very puppy-like. It was like looking at a 16-week-old puppy. Not mentally there whatsoever. Bred this bitch anyway. I was like, man, this is some heavy Jeep blood. I got to keep my Jeep blood going strong. Bred the bitch. You know what that bitch did? Every puppy she killed. Every last puppy she killed. And I was like, yo, like, what is wrong with you? You're, you're, you're old ass dog. You're, you're five, six years old. You're supposed to be mentally mature. Instinct is supposed to kick on for you to nurture these bu these puppies. Not kill these puppies. Like, wh what's going on? The dog's brain wasn't there. That was my fault for not recognizing and understanding then that a dog has to be mentally there in order to be a mature animal. Do y'all see where I'm going at with this? Y'all see where I'm going at with this? Age is apart, physical attributes are apart, but the main thing is mental status. If your dog is not mentally there to have litter, don't breed that dog. Yes? Where are you starting from, bro? We're out. How can we be out and I just bought them? And I don't know. Oh, here you go. So a dog has to be mentally there. Not just physically there, not just there because of age, not just there because, you know, they went through a few heat cycles. It has to be mentally there. It has to be. Now, going back to the males, going back to the males, I've had seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old males, <laughs> balls drop, very dominant, go hard, go home type males. But when it came down to breeding time, they wasn't there. <laughs> They wasn't there at all. The male didn't know what to do. I gave the man ample, ample time to try to mount this female. I even put the male on. I stuck the male thing up in there. He pulled out and run. I said, this is an older dog. Why is he doing that? He's not mentally there. So that means we do not breed that male. 
Those are two dogs. The female who is not mentally there at an older age, call it. Call it soft call. Get it spayed, get it neutered, give it away. Don't let that animal reproduce. The, the male dog who is old that is still not mentally there when it comes down to breeding and you done put his wee-wee up in that female, he's supposed to, instinct thing supposed to take over then. He's supposed to say, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been smelling it, I've been crying for this, this is what I've been waiting for. But then he pulls out and runs. He's not mentally there. You do not want to reproduce dogs like that. Why don't you want to reproduce dogs like that? Because if you reproduce a dog that is not mentally there at an older age, everything that he produces runs the chance of becoming problematic. What if you breed her the first time and have no one? But on the second time around, kills him. Kills the pups. Now, if you breed a female, first breeding, absolutely no issues. She does a fantastic job with the puppies. Raise them and everything. You breed her a second time and she has puppies. And then she kills these puppies. It's a few things that we have to look at. We have to look at, was there a stressor? Was her environment uh, changed? Um, was new dogs introduced into the pack um you know it's it's a few things that may have caused that issue i personally see I, I talk a lot because i went through a whole lot of stuff with these animals throughout all my years i personally had a dog who did that and then i had to figure out what was it that made this bitch do that what, what made her kill her puppies now after sitting back and going through just going through all of my notes because i take a lot of notes of my animals a lot of notes Okay, she bred first time, cool, no problems. It was summertime, dropped the litter, okay, we got her back on the same time, and you know, she gonna do, drop these joints in the summertime, okay, these puppies dropped in the summertime, it's nice and warm, but she killed the puppies. What the hell happened because she killed the puppies? We had a bad thunderstorm, a very, very, very bad thunderstorm, and that thunderstorm freaked her out so bad, she just took everything out, everything out, everything. And I was like, damn, her mental status was so off with her body being changed up, you know, chemically. Because the puppies in there, you know, the body changes up chemically. And I'm like, damn, that storm just sent that bitch over the edge. And it sent her over to the edge to the point where she was like, it's fight or flight. And she, what she did, she fought. She killed them puppies. And I guess she killed those puppies if I'm thinking as like a Nat Geo type uh, perspective, she probably killed those puppies so she can possibly get away. Just not thinking, okay, this is nature, these are animals. So you have to look at everything that goes along with it. If you had a dog that had puppies, no issue, and then she had another litter, and there was an issue where she started killing all these puppies, man, you got to look at it. Is it a stressor? Did I change something? Did I forget something? You know, it's going to drive you batshit crazy because it drove me batshit crazy. But when you get that opportunity to kind of sit back after taking notes, that's why I say everybody should have composition books dedicated to individual animals. When you sit back and you start thinking about it, you start reading through your composition book, taking notes and all everything that happened around that time. You will be able to figure out exactly what that stressor was. And then, then it's your choice again. Do you breed her again to, to try it again? Or do you just say, okay, like, I'm done. No more with this bitch. Like, she's good. She had a letter. I'm going to hit, go ahead and retire her and just let her live out the rest of her lives happy. What about females who decide to not feed their puppies for very long and short term? Female dogs that don't feed puppies. We're going to go with A-Bay's there. A-Bay, damn, drop the pups. We put the, the bitch on. We put the puppies on to the bitch. She got up and she walked away. I'm like, okay, what's, what's, what's going on with her? She would not feed those puppies for 24 hours. I don't know what it was within those 24 hours. And I, I chalked it up to this. I said, this thing didn't cut on quick enough. 
Why did instinct cut on quick enough? Started going through my notes. That's when I learned, God dog it, I'm spending way too much time doing what she's supposed to do naturally. We should have left the puppies there. We should have left the puppies alone. We should have just left them alone and let her instincts kick in. When she dropped the puppy, we were removing this puppy. We was cleaning this puppy. We was putting this puppy over in a warm bed. You know, and then waiting on her. Like, come on, girl, you're doing a good job. Come on, girl, you're doing a good job. Waiting on her to drop another one. And then we took that puppy again and put it over here. And then the next one, we took it and put it here. Next one, we took it and put it here. So natural instinct wasn't allowed to be cut on because this is when natural instinct cuts on. Most of the time, this is when natural instinct cuts on. The dam starts to go into labor. So she's nervous. She's walking around. She's trying to find out where I'm going to have these puppies. I'm building my nest. I'm getting everything all nice and situated. And then she drops that puppy. So when that puppy is dropped, the first thing the mother do is look. And then she sniffs and starts to clean. Rips them out of the sack. She eats the sack. She chews the umbilical cord. That puppy whines. The dam licks the puppy. The dam lays next to the puppy. The puppy goes towards the dam. And that whole motion of the puppy going like this, up and down the belly trying to find that nipple, cuts on natural instinct. But when that natural instinct is taken away, when you take these puppies away like this, you run the risk of the dam not wanting to nurse her puppies. You run the risk. And that's when I learned it. I learned that six years ago with, with Abe, my Brenda bitch, damn. So from there, I said, oh, my goodness, I'll never do that again. This bitch dropped puppies, them puppies stand right there. And this is where I noticed from Abe, damn, to Abe. I said, okay, I'm not going to touch these puppies. I'm going to leave these puppies right here. They're going to do what they do unless I need to intervene. So I let those puppies do what they do. The puppy started looking for that nipple. Found that nibble, latched on, instinct cut on. Every puppy she dropped, she allowed the puppies to nurse. But then there was a couple of situations to where I had to intervene. I had to jump in to clean out the airway of these puppies. But when I cleaned out the airway of these puppies, I did not, this is the dam, this is the puppy. I did not remove the puppy over here to do that. I kept that puppy right here in front of that dam. So while I'm sucking stuff out, that dam is licking that puppy. And then I just place it right back down and backed out. And I watched natural instinct kick on. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. Yeah, C-sections... <clears throat> this is this is why I personally will only use a C-section as an emergency. We have to remember they put the dogs out. They knock them out a little bit. And some dogs, once they are knocked out to be cut open to have these puppies and they wake up, the last thing they remember is not having puppies. The last thing they remember is having those those babies inside of their womb kicking around. But when they wake up, they're all disoriented, so they're looking around like, what the hell going on? And then they hear those little puppies crying like, oh, where, where the hell did these come from? Some dogs naturally kicks on. Some dogs, it may take a little longer for natural instinct to kick on. But we have to remember everything that we do for these animals, the C-sections, the, the husbandry work, all of this stuff. We have to be very careful with it. I say dogs, man, dogs are some of the most fascinating creatures in the world. You can sit there and you can watch them mate on their own. We have to do nothing. Only thing we really have to do for a dog to mate is what? Get a male and female and get them together because nature is going to take over eventually. Then the female dog starts to have her puppies or goes through the whole labor and has her puppies. There's not much that we really have to do other than kind of sit back. And if we think about it like in nature, if these were dogs outside in nature, they're not our pets at that point. If they do not revive one of their puppies, what do they do? They consume it and they keep it going. 
They keep going through the labor process. And when I mean consuming, I literally mean consuming. If you look at the study of wild dogs over in Africa, when one of their babies do not make it, they eat that baby. And the reason that they eat that baby is what? So other predators do not find the den. That's why they do that. But there's, there's a lot of stuff. We don't always have to be involved with all this stuff. We don't have to be so deeply rooted involved inside of this stuff. Sometimes it's our goal as the caretakers of these animals to just step back and let nature do its thing. Let nature do its thing. But always be cautious. Always stand there as that extra eye to say, okay, she having a little bit of trouble here. Let me go here and fix this to help her out and then back off it's your goal to sit there and just it's okay baby it's okay baby just ease the damn ease the damn keep the damn calm that's the only job we should really be doing when it comes down to letting these bitches have babies it's just making sure she is completely comfortable you need water yeah we're literally the servant for our bitches at that moment. You need water? Here, baby, I'm going to put a little high-calorie supplement on your gum so your energy level stays up. Or I'm going to give you a little smoothie that's full of nutrients so you can continue with your labor with ease. But everything else we can just kind of forget about and just let her do her thing. So back to the original topic because we will go elsewhere with a lot of this stuff. Let me make sure I ain't miss any questions. All right, miss no questions. So back to the original topic. What makes a fully mature animal? Like I said, in my opinion, it's a combination of a few things. It's a combination of the physical. It's a combination of the age. But most importantly, the one aspect that a lot of people seem to forget about when it comes down to these dogs, we have to make sure that these animals are mentally there. They're mentally sound in order to have a litter of puppies. Because if you don't have a mentally sound animal, especially a, a, un, a, 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 a female that isn't there in her brain, you run the risk of her killing the puppies. You run. You even run the risk of that bitch turning on your ass. To, let's be honest. She is so out of whack. Her hormones are all over the place. She run the risk of multiple things. So let's let's start looking at these animals, man, a little bit differently. Like like I said, man, when you come and you check out Chris Jones, Novocaine Kennels, I'm going to talk about stuff that's going to make you say, what the hell? It's going to make you literally think. It's going to make you think. Let's start to allow our animals to take natural instinct. Let's allow them to do what they are here to do. Let's allow them to do what they've been doing for millions of years without our assistance. Our job is to make sure that everything else is taken care of. The dog has the food. The dog has water. The dog is at ease when she's going through labor. But we also have to look at, okay, this bitch is now one. She's not ready. Two, she's not ready. Three, maybe ready. Let's check her mental status. Four, check her mental status again. And then we can go into having puppies. Because if we all are in a rush to have puppies at younger age, because let's be honest, let's be real honest. I'm a, I'm, I own American Bullies. I'm in the American Bully community. Let's be real honest. The more people get involved inside of these bullies, it seems like the younger and younger these puppies are starting to be when they're having babies. And that's all for one thing, one thing only, one thing only. They're trying to be popular. So they said, if I can produce a badass dog, I don't care how old the bitch is, but it's going to be badass. People will like me. But we got to get back to the point where we're saying, nah, forget the people liking me. I need to do what's best for these animals. After four and a half years old. It's either a mental issue with the dog that's not there or just something's off with the dog or it may be some type of stressor has happened and we need to correct that stressor or eliminate that stressor so the dog can mellow back out and do what it's supposed to do naturally. 
All right. Any other questions? Physical, age a little bit, physical a little bit. But the biggest thing to know if your dog is fully mature is mental. It's mental in my opinion. Mental. You can have the biggest damn dog in the world. It could be the strongest damn dog in the world. It could be the best looking dog in the world. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four. But if that dog is off in his head, there's no point in even breeding that animal, man. <laughs> like, for real. There's no point in breeding that animal. And if you get to that point and you notice that your dog is mentally off at that age, my opinion is get the dog spayed and neutered, give it away to a pet home, go back to the drawing boards and start over. Much love, much respect. Much love, much respect. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for chiming in with your questions. Thank y'all for trying to answer the question yourself. It's not a right or wrong thing for anybody. It's just a matter of opinion and where you are and how you look at dogs. Much love. I'm going to make you think. It's Chris Jones, Novocaine.